Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the ring, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, Alex Whipdam Ebanks. Let's welcome to the ring his opponent fighting tonight out of the red corner, Jeff, the Trouble One, Tobrizi. Doesn't exactly go as planned, unfortunately, for Jeff as he lost by TKO. But it's been almost an entire year, Tibor. Don't you kind of want to get back into it? Obviously, with injuries being the exception. Well, you know, he maybe had to make a decision. Uh, he had took some time and think about it. Um, not sure how that fight went. Maybe he got really hurt. I don't know. But uh, mm -hmm. either way, he's brave to get back in there and, and, and give it another shot. Mm -hmm. You can't. You cannot define your whole career on your first fight. No. There's so many people in this world that have failed and have come back to succeed tremendously. Well, I think the the best example has got to be our main event, Tim Cronin. He lost his first fight, and now he's won seven straight. Hey, so. I can say I lost my first fight. There you go. Yeah. I mean, did I did I really think I lost it? Maybe not, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jeffrey Tabrizi, 0 and 1. Fighting out of the U.S. of A. As you said, Michelle, his first fight was out of California. So you got to believe that uh, not fighting in his own backyard has really not is not going to affect him all that much. No, I don't think so. I think I'm thinking more of a redemption fight for him. Absolutely. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Championship Boxing here at the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. We get the action started with four rounds scheduled in the Super Welterweight Division, and it is being brought to you by United Boxing Promotions, along with their great sponsors, Cambridge Hyundai, Dixie Hyundai, Choice Hotels, Phillips Moving, Corona, and the Tilted Kilt Mississauga. Our three judges scoring on a 10-point must system will be Marvin Sazant, Harry Davis, and John Wiley. Our referee in charge, the third man in the ring, will be Rocky Zolnirchak. Introducing to you first, fighting tonight out of the blue corner, 
He's wearing black with gray and weighed in at 154 pounds. Hailing from Toronto, Ontario, tonight he is making his professional boxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Whipdam Ebanks. His opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing red trimmed in white and weighed in at 150 and a half pounds. Coming to us from Burlington, Ontario, he has a professional record of no wins with one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jeff, the trouble one, Tabrizi. Okay, guys, I've went over the instructions in the change rooms. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out banging. Rocky Zahir, Chuck, the third man in the ring for this one. And Rocky's been around for a long time. And it's nice to see a veteran referee with two guys that are so early on in their career. Oh, yeah, I like Rocky. He does a good job in there. I've had the pleasure of having him ref a bunch of my fights also. Good guy. Got to clear up a little uh, uh, miscommunication. Yes, Tabrizi fought out of California, came out of the U.S. of A., but is settled now in Burlington, Ontario. Tabrizi with a quick left hand. Ebanks standing straight up. Quick right from Tabrizi. Ebanks missing on all three of those punches. Great job by Tabrizi to stay out of the way. Ebanks gets a couple of shots in. Tabrizi gets his own overhand right in. Backs away from a couple of jabs from Ebanks. Be tough, Tibor, for these guys to, you know, no video really of each other, no real knowledge of each other's fighting styles. Yeah, it's their first fight, second fight. Uh, you know, they, they, they've kind of just got to bring everything they've got to the table and and make it all work within the four rounds. Yeah, you know pick, what I mean? Pick your style, Michelle. Pick your strengths and go with those. You got to be go confident in your own that's abilities. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can't worry about what your opponent's going to do. You got to just. It's all about you in there. And we talked about the mental aspect of the sport. And if you worry about you and you do you or you perform to your capabilities, most of the time you end up on the winning end of a yeah. decision. It helps you keep focused. You know, when you're thinking of, if you're standing in front of a guy and you're looking at what he's doing all the time, you're not thinking about what you, sh what you should be doing. It can, can, you know, you can fall behind very quickly. The biggest thing is these guys have got a game plan and they've got to stick to their game plan and know that it's the right way That's to right. go for that. That's right. You have to execute it. Good overhand right from Ebanks. Tries it again. Missed just shy of the left temple of Tabrizi. Jeff Tabrizi wearing the red trunks trimmed in white. Good right hand to the body. Alex Ebanks in the charcoal trunks. <laughs> Ebanks looks like he's kind of starting to get his range now. Good exchange along the ropes right in front of us. Nice job by Ebanks to bounce out of the way of that right hand. Ebanks tying up to Breezy. Rocky Zahir Chuck steps in to separate the fighters. Ebanks, very upright fighter. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little, uh, a little worried. This guy's his chin is up a little bit, his shoulders are a little bit low. I'd like him to see a little bit more of a shoulder shrug, kind of protecting those pockets around the chin like that. But those looping shots right there, those are the ones that are going to sneak in those pockets there underneath his chin. And you got to think too, as the smaller fighter. You know, you could hear it from the crowd. The overhand right is always something that a taller fighter has to look out for and defend against because really that's one way of, 
I guess, getting inside and making up for that range that you're losing on a, on a longer fighter. And that's the challenge that Ebanks is going to face. Being taller, a lot of his punches are missing the mark by about a half inch over the top of the head. Off your head, but you got to step forward. System. It's a different objective than the thing that you have going into the ring. It's not really a point system that it is in the amateurs. When you get into the pros, you can still win rounds without getting points. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's, and it's really difficult to say how it really actually is because you got three different judges around, right. and uh, both of them have their own minds. Both ju all three judge in different ways. Round number two of this scheduled four-rounder. Touched him with the left. Good little breeze. He backs shot. away. It was. But Ebanks, being the taller fighter and fighting in an upright style, he's having to punch straight down most of the time. Yeah, to breeze, he's kind of he kind of he's kind of bending over as he's avoiding his shots. And he tends to look. The, he, he tends to stay there. And he might be open. Two good right hands from to breeze. Ebanks. Clutches him up, gathers his senses, and steps back in the center of the ring. Pause at the jab, takes a right to the chin. Ebanks, showing he can take one to the chin in the second round. But Tabrizi looking a little more confident in the ring. Using a lot of good fakes, head movement. Defense is so key with head movement when you're the smaller fighter because you need to bob your weave, bob and weave into, you know, the pocket, right? And, oh, yeah. And in order to get the shots off that you want and then retreat and get out of danger again, you have to have, as mentioned, you know, good footwork and uh, very good head movement, which uh, Tabrizi is definitely showing. We talked about Tabrizi starting his pro career out of the state of California, but has settled in Burlington, Ontario, fighting here now in the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Ebanks pins him against the ropes. Tabrizi slipping most of those sort of looping punches coming from Ebanks. Ebanks a little tentative getting inside. He's still landing some good body shots, though. Achibur, well, I, I almost feel as though if Ebanks threw a little bit more down the middle, he'd have more success. Just throw straight punches instead of the looping punches, that he would be able to keep Tabrizi at bay while a, scoring as well. And we just saw that right there. He went straight after him with a, with a jab and a straight right and both connected. Yeah, both guys, both guys are making uh, what they do good work right, right now, you know? Ebanks has to be a little more authoritative with that jab. He's gotta, he's gotta have some purpose behind that punch. Make it a little more snappy. Second round in the books. Second pro round for Alex Ebanks. Jeff Tabrizi with another good round here at the Hershey Center. There you see Tabrizi's corner. So Tabrizi lets go a few here. There's a big overhand right. And you, like you said, Michelle, you've got to connect on the bigger, uh, taller fighter with that kind of punch. And that head movement just made, you know, Ebanks miss two times in that one small replay, right? Well, Tibor, I know in terms of experience, having one fight versus doing, having your pro debut may not seem like a very big difference, but it's still, you know, mentally and feeling comfortable in the ring is a very big difference in my eyes, and especially seeing how Ebanks is adjusting and how quickly, you know, Tabrizi has a little bit of swagger and confidence in there. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure they've spent numerous hours in the gym and, and uh, trying to get accustomed to, you know, within those four ropes. But uh, I think they're looking pretty good, too, in this big crowd here. Right hook coming from Tabrizi. That found the mark, glancing off the shoulder and into the side of the head of Ebanks. 
DeBreezy very good coming off the attack of uh, Evans. Looking for those counter shots, yeah. Third round of four here from the Hershey Center. This is fight number one, Alex Ebanks, wearing the charcoal trunks. And Jeff DeBreezy in the red trimmed in white. One of the other things I think the fans will see when these guys get a little more into their career, there's a good right coming from Ebanks. Now connects with the left. DeBreezy backing up. Ebanks over the top. Ebanks again, has him backed up. Tabrizi missing on that wild one was Ebank, but he comes back with a good jab, goes back to the body, takes one from Tabrizi. Tabrizi along the ropes, moves it back to the middle of the ring. Ebanks over the top, connects, tries to pot him this time. He's got Tabrizi with the hands down, undercut, over the top. Trouble, he's got to keep those hands up. See the confidence in Alex Ebanks just blossoming here in the third round. A couple of solid punches, Michelle, and all of a sudden he feels like he's indestructible. Absolutely. And Tabrizi's just trying to basically catch his breath at this point and basically get back into the center of the ring as well. He looks very wobbly right now. Good body punches coming from Ebanks. Hits on the left and a wild right just missing from Tabrizi. You know, Tibor, you mentioned it right off the top that in a short fight like this, especially in the early going of your career, you got to let it all hang out because you only have four rounds that's to right, show. That's right, it's not a lot of time. You, you lose two rounds, you lost half the fight. Yep. He bangs with a slip. Now you can tell that a couple of those shots definitely affected to breezy because he's not throwing as much as many combinations rather as he was before it's more so you know one or two big looping punches and that's pretty much it he's gassing quicker as well yeah, those right hands that he banks hit him with right there even that one right there he, he, if you look at if you look at the breezy like i was saying how he bends over like that he's kind of waiting down there too long he leaves his side of his head open there and i think he's getting hit in the temple behind the ear which are dangerous dangerous spots absolutely that that kind of a punch right to the behind the ear in that yes. temple spot that's it somewhere where your guy can really go down quickly yeah you gotta hold you know you gotta you gotta make sure you keep moving that head trying to stay in the same spot too long and of course have those hands where you know you, you know you gotta know where they are so here comes Alex Ebanks. There's the right, and he just misses on the jabs, but connects on the next right hand. Yeah, you know, as Tabrizi's kind of moving straight back, he's not, he's not, you know, he's not taking the side angle as trying to get away. He's moving straight back. That's, it makes it easier for the taller guy when you move straight back. Yep. Best and round so far for Alex Ebanks. Absolutely. And it goes back to that earlier point that if someone's moving straight back and you're the taller, lankier fighter, all you're doing is just swinging down the middle. You know what I'm saying? Throwing down the middle because that's exactly where your opponent's going to be. You don't need to take any other angles. You're standing in that window, that that's target. It. Ooh. Good right hand coming from Tabrizi, but Ebanks comes straight back up. Tabrizi knocks him almost to the canvas, and they're going to get a standing eight count. Yeah, again, he snuck that right hand in. Tabriz is kind of turning away and, he, and he's letting that shot hit. I wish he would I wish he would face the shot more and keep his hands up or his arms up, his shields up, and try and deflect the shot. I think he would he'd be able to see it more. Ebanks' corner during this uh, timeout was saying, pick your shots. Don't decide to be wild now. Ebanks doing a great job just holding that left hand straight out, just keeping him at bay. Yes. And that's the perfect example of your jab not just being used as, a, say, a distraction or, or, you know, or just setting up other punches. It can just distract. Big right hand coming from Ebanks. He misses with the wild hook. Ebanks has got Tabrizi pinned along the ropes. Tabrizi throws one back over top. Ebanks knows he's just trying to set up that thunder of a right hand.
135 left here in the final round. This is a four-round fight. And once again, Alex Ebanks is taking control of this fight. We'll see if Jeff Tabrizi can hang on. Tabrizi's got a small cut on his left cheek. There's a quick right. Tabrizi backed into the ropes again. Ebanks misses a wild right over top. Both fighters come together and roll into the corner. A buck five left here in the final round, the fourth. Pro debut for Alex Ebanks. This is fight number two of the professional career of Jeff Tabrizi. Ebanks, two right hands connect. Nice counter shots from Ebanks. And Tibor, you're mentioning, you know, him getting hit at the side of the ear, but that's also because when you turn your head as a boxer, yeah, he's kind of he kind of leans over like that. He's got that bad habit. And he, he, his arms are down low at the same time. It just makes it for an easy target. Yep. And it sounds rudimentary, but the shots you don't see are the ones that knock you out. Yeah. Easy target for the taller man. Evangs will find out later on in his career, though, that just trying to load up that right hand, guys are going to defend against that fairly simply. Yeah, he's getting a little anxious. He knows Tabrizi's in trouble, and he's kind of got him. Uh, he's hitting him with big shots. Final he's trying to get him out there. Of the round. They're going to clutch it for the final five now. Rocky Zahirchuk steps in, and that does it for round number four. A great round again for Alex Ebanks. Well, gentlemen, I had that as a 10-8 round. It's a good fight. For Ebanks, and here's a good look why. I've got my scorecard shows 38-37 for Ebanks. That right hand happened Yo. exactly where you said it would happen. Dominated. Another one. Yeah, you can't get into that, uh, as you called it, that window, into that frame, and, and not be able to get find your way out, because if you do against a bigger fighter, you're, yeah, you're you, in deep. You, you got to get in and out of it. You can't stay there too long. Good uh, good win for Ebanks and his team. Uh, my apologize. Good team out there. He's got uh, Egerton McEwen there in his corner. Good guy. I like him a lot. Two things I'd like to see from Ebanks in the future, and hopefully we get to see him here at United Promotions a little bit more, is, you know, more work off that jab. So follow up the jab with more than just the right hand, like you said, Doug, and just keep pressing the action. And that, that comes with maturity, Absolutely, that comes with experience. Yeah. I noticed a little bit, he got a little bit anxious, he was trying to take him out, and he kind of was getting a little too close to him and smothered himself, but uh, none, nonetheless, he, 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 made it, he made it work for it tonight. You know, if you start maybe adding a couple, you know, fakes with that left hand, too. You yeah. pump out that jab, then have a fake and come around the corner with a hook or something. You could be devastating. Let's go to the ring. Here's Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Marvin Cezanne scores it 38 to 35. Judge Harry Davis scores it. 40 to 35, and Judge John Wiley scores it 39 to 36. All to your winner, a unanimous decision, and successful here tonight in his professional boxing debut, Alex Wickham Evans. How about a big round of applause for Jeff Tabrizi.